Hello friends! I hope this finds you all well and healthy and happy. My name is Alicia. I would like to welcome you to my channel, Alicia at Home, where we are living our best home life through all things creative. Welcome back. It is so good to see you. I feel like it's been forever and a day since we've all been together, but I guess it really hasn't. It's been like a week, <laughs> but it just feels like it's been a long time. Did y'all make it through the holidays? Our holidays were good. They were sweet. They were special. I hope yours were too. So today we are going to be working on some winter decor pieces. I got all of our Christmas taken down and then it was kind of sad because the whole house just felt so empty and so bare and plain and blah. <laughs> so our plan for today is to work on some DIY winter decor projects and then just do a little styling and some decorating. We are going to kick off our first DIY project by making some really fun rustic candlesticks. And we are just using some four by four posts here. And then I found these blocks that I'm going to use as the base for our candlestick at Michael's. But I believe you can get them at just about any craft, craft type store. So Michael cut them to length for me and then gave them a good sanding. And now he is just finding center on both the base and the candlestick so that we can pre-drill the holes to attach the base. And then we are also drilling a hole on the top because I've got these really neat metal candlesticks that I took the bottom off of. And that's what's going to go on top our candlesticks to hold the candle. And here Michael is just drilling a hole, pre-drilling this and he's countersinking the hole so that on the bottom of the base the screw doesn't stick out and prevent our candlestick from sitting flush now we're back in the studio and I'm just going to give these a good a paint job and I am just using regular black craft paint here and then I'm going to take a wet towel or just a wet shop cloth and I'm going to wet distress these and you can see here how it's just kind of lifts up that paint just kind of subtly so that those wood grains just show through very subtly. It's so pretty. I love how these turned out. I think they came out fabulous. We can't have winter decor without some snowflakes. So we are going to cut these cool snowflakes out on our scroll saw and we are cutting them on some really, really thin one eighth inch or maybe it's yeah one eighth inch plywood. So on this one, I drew it out and then because we're gonna make these 3D, one of them after it was drawn out, we cut, cut it in half on the table saw. And then I'm just going to go to work here and cut, cut all these out. Michael cut one out and I cut the other two out. So now I'm just um, going to give them a good paint job and I'm just painting these white, just up, it's a, I believe it's Brilliant White by Folk Art, I believe is what it was called. And um, so this is the parts, there's three of them. So if you want to cut these out for yourself, I will have the, a free downloadable pattern in the description box for y'all on these. So I will say that these were a little fiddly to paint because first of all, because we cut them on such thin plywood, they're pretty fragile, but getting in all those little grooves to get all the, you know, the edges painted, that was real fiddly. <laughs> so, but I got it done and I'm just going to paint both sides of these, let them dry really well. And then I'm going to distress the edges just ever so slightly. Now it 
it's time to attach them to the big snowflake. And I'm going to just use hot glue for this. So I'm going to attach one of those half pieces to one side of the snowflake and I'm gonna let that hot glue set up really, really well before I flip it over. And then we will attach the second one to the back side of the larger snowflake. And then we will have a really cute 3D snowflake. This is pretty fragile, so I would recommend being careful with it unless you cut yours out on a thicker plywood. But if you don't have access to a scroll saw and you would like to cut some of these out, please let me know on my um, in the description box and I would be happy to make some for you and send them to you. So this is how they turned out. I think they are very, very neat. Next up on the list, we are going to make some cute little decorative skis. And we are just cutting these out of some scrap barn wood that we had lying around. So it's kind of weathered and already has that gray look to it, which I think is really cool. And um, so now Michael is, so you could just see he was cutting out the skis and now he is working on the poles and the little boot thing that goes at the bottom of the poles. He's cutting those out. And rather than cutting them with the scroll saw because he, feels like he can't get them as round as he would like. He's going to use his grinder to grind these into perfect little circles. <laughs> These did come out so perfect. He did such a good job. I don't know what I would do without him. He is definitely my hero. So now we have all the components um, cut out and ready. So Michael is just going to drill the holes in these so that we can put them through the dowels. And then here are some dowels that we are using for the actual ski poles. And he's just grinding the, the ends to make a little bit of a tip because you know how ski poles kind of have a pokey tip on them. So here is what we have so far, and now we're going to head back into the studio and start staining all of these pieces. So I'm gonna start by staining the, um, the actual ski poles. And here's where all the fun begins, because as I was wiping up this little mess I made, I slid my board and guess what? I spilled my paint everywhere. <laughs> and I did not do this just once, I did it twice, which makes it even funnier. <laughs> What a mess I have made everywhere, y'all. There is paint everywhere, <laughs> goodness. So moving on, let's finish staining our ski poles. So I'm just going to stain these black. Um, and if I didn't mention that been mentioned before, I am just using some black acrylic paint that I watered down to make my own stain color. So I am going to also stain these little discs. And once they are stained, I'm going to also stain the skis because although I really liked that faded barnwood color that they were, I decided I wanted all the sides to match. So I went ahead and stained both sides and front and back and the edges. And this was so messy, y'all. Look at my hands. I don't know why I do this to myself, why I don't ever wear gloves. <laughs> so after washing up, I've just, um, I'm going to just give these a little distressing and I'm just doing a light distressing across the edges of all, all of these pieces, the skis and the little round discs that go on our ski poles. Now that all of the distressing is done, I'm going to add some jute to um, the top end of these ski poles just to give it a little extra something something and make it, you know, just have a little extra uh, texture to it. So I'm just using some hot glue to attach this and then I make a couple of rounds and then glue again and I just kind of repeat this process all the way until I've run out of um, my jute. I didn't want the, this to be too long so I just did a little bit, just a few rows. Then I'm going to, um, I did this to both poles and I'm going to add the discs back on and I wanted to glue the two discs together. So I'm gluing the smaller disc to the bottom half of the top disc, if that makes sense. And I also did add a little bit of wood glue inside the hole of those discs so that it would help hold it to my ski poles. 
And I think these turned out so cute. I think the skis are probably going to be my favorite from everything that we made today. So now that we have the ski poles finished, I'm going to, I just, I was going to put those on the end and then I decided not to, but I'm going to go ahead and attach my skis together. So they kind of hold in that little slightly crisscross pattern and I had to stand them up to do this. So I apologize. It's not a very good view here, but once I got them, once I got the hot glue on and they're positioned the way I want them, I'm going to wrap some jute around these and just tie it in a cute little knot. And then after I get that knot on, I'm going to attach, the ski poles to this also just by tying them with some jute. project is going to be kind of just a fun whimsical little project I wanted to make a cute stocking cap to go with our warm and cozy um, theme that we have going here kind of just that you know mountain ski resort type theme so we cut out the hat on that same quarter inch plywood and then I wanted a tiny little snowflake to go on the brim of our hat so bless Michael's sweetheart he cut this tiny little snowflake out and it was tedious and it took him a long time but oh my gosh it turned out so amazing he did an incredible job cutting this out for me and no fingers were lost in the making of this video <laughs> I also forgot to mention that we cut out a separate brim piece so that this hat could just have a little bit of depth to it. So we are going to use some beads, some jute, some scrapbook paper, and our, our darling little snowflake to embellish this hat. And I am just using this, um, oh, I think this was called Fawn by Folk Art. And I'm just going to brush on a little bit on the edges of the front part of this hat because I'm gonna cut my scrapbook paper slightly smaller so that some of the wood can show through. But I do completely cover the edges and the backside of both hat and brim. And I'm also going to paint our snowflake in that same brilliant white paint that I used on our big 3D snowflake. While the paint on our hat and brim and snowflake is drying, we are gonna make a pom-pom for the top of our hat. And I am just using some yarn here. And I, I have these cute little clover pom-pom makers and I'll have the link in the description box for y'all if you're interested. So I'm just going to go ahead and wind my yarn around one side of this little clover and then I'll close it and hold on to it tightly because if you let it go, you're gonna have a big mess and everything will come unraveled. And it is better to use thin yarn on this, but I couldn't find my thinner yarn. So I'm using some fat yarn, which makes it a little harder to cut. But once we get it wrapped, I'm going to go ahead and cut these down that middle seam. But again, make sure you hold this very tightly closed because if it comes undone, then your whole pom-pom will just be completely ruined. So once I have that cut, I'm going to tie. So you can see that there's a... Um, center part and I'm going to just tie my string through that to tie great big huge knots or not great big huge knots <laughs> tight knots to hold our pom-pom together and then we will just release it from our little pom-pom maker and we will have a cute fluffy pom-pom but it probably will need a haircut when that is all done so we'll give it a quick little haircut and kind of fluff it all up I got that first pom-pom made I did find my smaller yarn so I just wanted to show you the differences between the two I think I like the smaller thinner yarn better so that's the one I'm going to use so now we are going to cut our trace our hat out onto our scrapbook paper and cut it out but when I cut it out 
make sure that you flip your hat backwards to cut it out, otherwise it won't match the same exact shape of your, um, your hat, if that made sense. I'm just gonna cut this out, and I am cutting it out slightly smaller than the actual shape itself so that some of my wood shows through on the edges as you can see here. Then I'm just going to go ahead and glue these down, and I'm just using all leans, all purpose glue here. I love this glue, it works great for all of my wood projects that I like to, you know, embellish with scrapbook paper. Now I'm going to use some tight bond wood glue and a little bit of hot glue and glue um, our brim to the hat. And I'm using a little bit of hot glue just to give it instant hold while we're waiting for our um, wood glue to completely set up. And I did this off camera, but I did clamp these and let them dry really well before I moved on to our next steps. So now we are going to attach our beautiful little snowflake. I'm so proud of the snowflake. Michael did such an amazing job cutting that snowflake out for me. So I glued that on with some hot glue and then I glued our pom-pom with hot glue to the top. Now I'm just going to make a cute little bow with some jute and then add our beads to the very end and then I tie a big knot on this to make sure that you know our beads don't come off. And then I will hot glue this into place as well. And then we will have a cute, cute little stocking cap. After I got the cute little bow and beads tied on, I thought this needed just a little extra something. So I'm adding this really cute, tiny little pearl to the middle of our snowflake. And here we have this darling little stocking cap for our cozy winter vibes. For our final project today, we are going to make a warm and cozy sign. I just thought this would be a great way to finish off our projects and just kind of bring everything together. So I cut out all of my lettering using my um, silhouette cutter on vinyl. And I am using temporary vinyl here. This is not permanent vinyl because I am going to do the reverse stencil method on this, um, which is by, you know, I just put the the um, vinyl lettering down and then I will stain over the top of it and so when I go to peel the letters back our wording will be that really pretty natural wood underneath and I am just using some transfer tape here to transfer my vinyl from its the vinyl backing to my wood boards here and once I get this peeled off, I am going to take uh, my little craft knife here and cut between all the, the slats where the boards come together. I'm going to cut the vinyl and kind of press it down so that when I do my reverse stencil, the vinyl actually looks like it is part of the wood and we don't have any weird um, gaps where the, the, uh, boards, the boards come together. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Sometimes I just get so stuttery over my words and don't know what I'm trying to say. It all makes sense in my mind and then I can't some, sometimes can't get it from my mind to my mouth. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just going to repeat this process with all of our lettering. And if you wanted to, you could actually leave this sign exactly the way it is. I show a picture here of what it looks like before I did the um, stain over the top of it. And this is what it looks like after the stain. And I am so sorry, but I thought I hit record on my camera when I was staining this, but apparently I did not. <laughs> so this is what it looks like after it's stained. And I just love how it turned out. I like that, that contrast with the natural wood and the dark stain.
That was a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed working on all those DIY projects together. They all turned out great. I think my favorite is probably the candlesticks and the skis. <laughs> Y'all are gonna have to let me know what your favorites were from all five of the projects that we worked on together today. So now I think what we will do is I'm just gonna give you guys just a quick little tour, a quick little walkthrough of how I styled all of the pieces that we created to today and um, just kind of share with you a little bit about my winter decor. Starting in the entryway, I styled this entryway table with just the scale and a lantern and this wreath I just made with some cedar picks and some boxwood picks and then added some snowballs to the scale. I wanted my theme, my winter decor theme to be sort of that, just foresty, cabin retreat, cozy feel. So on the chase lounge, I just added in some neutral pillows and blankets and I put our cute little hat there. Moving on to the mantle, I started with this big art piece. I just feel like that really anchors all of the decor pieces. Then I used our skis, our candlesticks, and another lantern with some tall skinny candles in it and a basket of greenery. On the apothecary, I just placed our warm and cozy sign with a lantern and a box of firewood. On the coffee table, I decided to just go very simple with a bowl full of pine cones and a couple of candles. As for the coffee bar, I decided to just bring out some of my plaid, so I added in these cute gray and black and white plaid canisters and some really fun wintry coffee mugs. And then I changed the art in the little clock tower and added some greenery. And I think that just pulls everything together nicely. On the dining room table, I've just added in these rosemary trees. I just kept it very simple and not too busy. I'm really liking the overall look. I think everything is so nice and cozy. Alrighty friends, that is going to conclude today's video. Thank you all so much for being here with me today and for hanging out. It was so much fun. I loved working on all of our DIY projects together. They all turned out wonderful and I had fun styling them and just bringing in some fun winter cozy, some cozy winter elements to our winter decor. <laughs> so anyway, thank you all again so much for being here with me today. Next week, we are going to be hanging out in the studio. I've got some really fun sewing projects planned for us. I want to replace some of the pillow covers in my bedroom and a few of them here in our grand room as well. So that's what we're going to be doing. I think it's going to be a lot of fun and I look forward to hanging out with y'all again. So I will see you next week. Until then, y'all take care. Bye.